Good morning, everyone. This is Rocco coming back at you. We are doing our test route one, which goes through Hendersonville, North Carolina, to my parents. And then we are planning to go all the way up to Asheville and back this morning to do some quick videos. Uh, I'm not going to record as many videos today. If you're wondering why I'm not in full self driving, it's because of our GPS bug issue. Uh, let's actually go ahead and enable it and see if maybe it won't freak out. You gotta make sure you have two hands on the wheel because sometimes it'll do very quick movements. Yeah, see it showed navigation in zero feet. Now it's back on, now it re-navigated, or the GPS locked back on. It's always about this spot right here is where it locks back on. I'm pretty sure also, so I looked off to the left to go look at something, I'm, and obviously I knew nothing was in front of me, but I'm pretty sure the car will kind of give a slight phantom break when you do that. Uh, just to kind of like, hey, look forward, stupid. <laughs> so, it's one of those things. Ooh. Okay, well, I wasn't pressing the accelerator. It just was going to go right into the medium or right over top of it. Um, and so, yeah. Like I said on my previous video, I, I'm not a fan of how it just launches on the on-ramps. That is not needed for most on-ramps. There are a few, there are a few, but most you do not need to launch like it does. And especially when it's not very confident on this on-ramp because of poor lane markings, it kind of swerves back and forth. It is not something uh, that I feel comfortable having it doing. And obviously we already have two disengagements for this drive because it's just doing erratic movements. Um, it's just, it's not acceptable. it down so it doesn't jam on the brakes of the truck behind me. Yeah, the truck came up very close on me. And again, this is why it needs to get off this exit as soon as possible instead of waiting uh, to for a second past the dotted lines. It needs to go ahead and just get off the highway. sure what it's doing. Okay, I'm pressing the accelerator to keep it from slowing down again. Like that car behind me was like quite far back. I'm not sure if you can even see it. Yeah, you can barely see it back there. That was quite far back. Oh, we also don't want to go this route. Okay, so this brake right here was better seem to slow down at a more reasonable time and that kind of hesitate going back and forth. Okay, again here it says reduce speed ahead on this sign so as soon as you get across this bridge it needs to be at 20 mile an hour and it's just it's too fast and it's just gonna jam on See how this Prius is slowing down and see how I'm not slowing. Like, look, zero mile an hour and it's still going 40. Like, that needs to be fixed, Tesla. Like, that, and there's literally been, I've seen multiple videos now of two two different people getting tickets because it didn't, didn't slow down an appropriate amount of time. It, yeah. 
that it just is unacceptable that it you can scroll it down so much. The only way to slow down is to hit the brake. Like that's the only way to slow down quicker, or to be to slow it down sooner, which is what I normally do. And by example, I didn't slow it down uh, this time to show you what would happen. Um, that turn right there actually was better than previous versions, more confident. trying to break for these flashing yellows I don't quite I think see look it changes colors I don't quite understand why it does that I'm like can it not tell what color it is if that if that's a problem that's a serious issue because it should be able to tell what color you know what color the lights are right there okay very delayed braking for this light. It clearly saw it was red up ahead and just decided to brake last minute for some reason. Okay, I'm gonna press it through. I have no one here, no one behind us. I'm not tapping the accelerator, it is, it did. Okay, that was completely wrong. Completely wrong. And also, I didn't need the right blinker on there. Uh, so that was a complete failure and complete downgrade. I think 10.3 did it best. We're back on the road, everyone. And waiting for it. There it goes. Okay, so recap of this drive so far. Just Some things are better. Some things are worse, like that turn. That turn is notoriously difficult for it to work. It goes through the turn lane and goes, and it start, then it gets into the wrong turn lane. It, it is, it's because the lane markings are poor. If, the, if they fix the lane markings there, I would probably do it perfectly every time. But that's, that's not an excuse. Like it should be able to do it with poor lane markings. There are tons, probably millions of intersections in the world that have poor lane markings or not existing lane markings. It has to be able to go through the intersection correctly. It can't be going in incorrect lanes to get through the intersection. And it's still trying to get into the turn lane. You could feel it trying to turn the wheel a little bit. Let's see if this is fixed though. Okay, so it corrected itself. At least maybe this issue will be fixed because uh, it, that was a regression for the last few versions. It regressed the way it went into the turn lanes here. See that type of movement where it like was half in the turn lane and turned out hadn't done like it's done that the last few versions, but hasn't done that since like a long time ago. That, that was fixed for several versions, and then all of a sudden it started doing it again. It's kind of disheartening, though. Know? Like, that's, that's what's expected with these type of software updates. You're going to have regressions in certain areas, even areas that have been perfect, maybe since the very beginning. You might all of a sudden, like, it just might miss a turn that it's never done, done before. So, yeah, it's, it's, one, it's one of those things that you should expect to happen. Like right here, I'm gonna expect it to go into the turn lane because there's no lane line. And I'm gonna correct it because it shouldn't be doing that. It shouldn't be going into the turn lane. So obviously this drive, not very good. I haven't had like, think about that everyone. Uh, if you really pay attention to my videos, I always put in the title if I had zero disengagements. And I really haven't, besides the one um, Kirby Mountain Road test, I haven't had zero disengagement drives in a long time. So, uh, since like version 10.2, I think was my favorite version. A little bit slow going into the acceleration, but that was a good turn otherwise. Um, yeah, everyone, that's, this drive, I'm, I'd call it acceptable. <laughs> Uh, 
I just feel like it's not as good as previous drives. Like 10.2, I think it was 10.2. One, one of the previous drives that had zero disengagements on this were, I would say, the best it's ever been. I uh, made it through that turn, made it through this turn, everything else seemed smooth. Like that unprotected left was smoother. It's, um, yeah, it did everything else pretty good. Uh, otherwise, it just, it's not, not what I want to see. I think that one major intersection with, without the lines is, uh, gonna be the pain point of this drive once it starts doing that nailing it every single time then we know um, we have made great improvements this turn as a bonus add add-on yep um, it's started missing it it never used to miss it and now it starts missing it every time so I'm not sure what's going on with that um, but that doesn't count as the main drive because it's not part of my test route. Uh, if you have questions um, for me, just feel free to put them down below in, in the comments. And I will see you in the next one. Thanks, everyone. Bye.